We know that bridges play an important part in our daily lives. We know there are essential components of cities and the roadways between populations of people. Some bridges are simple, straightforward, and others are amazingly complex. One amazing example of a bridge contribution to connecting people to other populations and places for both social and commerce reasons is the San Juanico Bridge. Located in Tacloban City, which is one of the longest bridges in the Philippines. It was built in 1969 and still existing today. It connects people from Samar to Leyte. So, how do they build this such strong bridge? But before that, engineers should know the seven types of bridges. There are many different types of bridges each with their own advantage and disadvantages. If you are an engineering contractor or civil engineer intending to work on a bridge project, here is a refresher of the basic principle behind each type. A quick read through may help to ensure you're well informed when discussing bridge projects with your colleagues and customers. In case you are wondering, there is no single answer to the question what is the best type of bridge? This is because many factors need to be considered such as the location, the span required, weight and volume of traffic, resources, and the budget available. First is arc bridges. An arc bridge is a bridge with abutments at each end shaped as a curved arc. Arc bridges work by transferring the weight of the bridge and its loads partially into horizontal thrust, restrained by the abutments at either side. One of the most famous examples of a stone arc bridge is the Pont du Gard Aqueduct, built by the Romans near Nain, France. It has survived more than 2,000 years. The builders used mortar to secure the stones together only in its top tier. Advantages of arc bridges High levels of strength and resistance Adapts to local environmental conditions well Greater span compared to beam bridges, though less span than cantilever and suspension types can be constructed from many different materials such as stone, brick, concrete, iron, and steel. Disadvantages of arc bridges Creating a long span length requires more arcs Time-consuming to construct and maintain Requires strong side support to complete a successful span And requires considerable expertise to build Second is beam bridges Beam bridges are the simplest structural forms for bridge spans supported by an abutment or pier at each end. No moments are transferred throughout the support. Hence, their structural type is known as simply supported. The simplest beam bridge could be a log, a wood plank, or a stone slab laid across a stream. Lake Pontchartrain Causeway in Louisiana, the world's longest overwater bridge, is an example of a beam bridge. Advantages of beam bridges Simplicity and quick construction Inexpensive if no piers needed Modules can be prefabricated away from the bridge location 
Versatile can be used in many locations. Multiple types of material can be used. Disadvantages of beam bridges Limited span length between supporting structures. They can start to sag as they age. Weight limits are sometimes needed. Poor aesthetics. Costs are affected by fluctuations in steel prices. Maintenance and painting cost of steel bridges is expensive and time-consuming. Third is the cantilever bridges. A cantilever bridge is a bridge built using cantilever structures that project horizontally to space supported on only one end. The most famous example of this type of bridge is the Fort Railway Bridge in Scotland which was the longest span in the world from 1890 until 1990 when the cubic bridge in the Canada was built. So, there are the advantages of cantilever bridges. First, a good method of creating long spans. Support is required only on one side of each cantilever, suitable for deep rocky valleys on flood prone, flood prone area where supporting structures cannot be built, little or no disruption to traffic underneath the bridge. On bridges with multiple spans, the cantilevers can be built simultaneously to reduce time. Disadvantages of cantilever bridges First, the complex to construct and maintain requires a heavy structure so more material drives up to the cost, not suitable or excessive climate condition or at earthquake prone area, experience a high amount of tension during the construction aka negative moment, and last is stability relies on balancing compressive and tensile forces. Fourth is cable stayed bridges. This bridge form in which and the weight of the deck is supported by a number of nearly straight diagonal cables and tension running directly to one or more vertical towers. The towers transfer the cable forces to the foundation through vertical compression. One famous example of this bridge is the Hotong Yangtze River Bridge in China. It is road rail cab cable stayed bridge connecting the cities of Shanghai, Nantong, and Suzhou in the, in the Shangzhou province across the Yangtze River. So the advantages of the cable state bridges, fast construction time compared to other to other bridge types, more rigid of suspension bridges, cost effective, can be aesthetically pleasing, multiple design option. The option is spa, side spar, cantilever spar, multi, multiple span, cradle system designs. Disadvantages of cable state bridges. Suitable for short to medium distance, shorter span than suspen su suspension bridges. Difficult to access in some areas, which means higher than average cost of maintenance. Chaos can be prone to corrosion and high levels of fatigue. Of fatigue. Easier to vandalize by cutting the cables. Not suitable for excessive climate condition or earthquake prone. Fifth is suspension bridges. 
A suspension bridge is a type of bridge in which the deck is hung below suspension cables and vertical suspenders. One famous example of this bridge include the Brooklyn Bridge in New York, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, and the Tower Bridge in London. The advantages of suspension bridges Best bridge type of creating the longest spans with minimum piers regarded by many and as aesthetically pleasing creating a landmark for the community Waterway can be left open while the bridge is under construction Almost all of the work takes place on the top of the bridge Flexibility Design allows for deck section to, the, to be replaced can be built with a high deck allowing plenty of clearance for passing ships. The disadvantages of suspension bridge Not as a robust as some bridge types Combination of vertical pressure and extreme side wind speeds can lead to a failure of the span. High winds can be cause suspension bridge to the start vibrating. They can struggle to support focused heavy weights, for example the trains. Fail failure for the for just one cables can be enough to cause the interbridge to collapse. Access below the deck is difficult during construction and maintenance. Some suspension bridges require ex extensive foundation work if the ground is soft. Six is the tide arc bridges. A tide arc bridge or both steering bridge uses features seen in both a suspension bridge and an arch bridge. However, unlike a traditional arch bridge, the arch is positioned above the deck and uses vertical cables attached to support the deck. This arc or bow uses the tensions of its vertical cables together with the compression of the arc to support the load, keeping the bridge very stable. One famous example of this type of bridge in the Philippines is the Binondo Intramuros Bridge in Manila that spans the Pasig River. It connects San Fernando Street in Binondo and Buel de, and Buel de Ra in the street, in San Nicolas to Solona Street in Riverside Drive in Intramuros.
So the advantages of Tide Arch Bridge, it is very strong, less force on ab ab abutments, can be built off-site and transported into place. So the disadvantage of this is regular maintenance required to ensure stability of the hangers and arch. If one hanger breaks, the entire structure can be adversely affected. Size of each pad is limited as compared with suspension bridge. More expensive to build as compared with other types of bridges the same length. The seventh and last type of bridge is the truss bridges. Truss bridge is a bridge whose load bearing superstructures is composed of a truss. A structure of connect connected elements usually forming triangular units. The connected elements may be stressed from tension, compression, or sometimes both in response to dynamic, to dynamic loads. An example of this type of bridge is the Ayala Bridge in Filipino. Tulay ng, tulay ng Alaya and in Spanish, Puente de Alaya. It is a steel truss bridge over the Pasig River in Manila, Philippines. It connects the district of Ermita and San Miguel, passing over the western tip of Isla de Convalen Convalencia. So. of Truss Bridge. Uh, it is the strongest type of bridge. Can be built off-site. Lighter than other bridge, bridge types. Economical. It can withstand extreme weather conditions. Versatile. Able to carry its roadway above deck truss, along the middle or through truss, or on a lower truss sitting below the major structure. The disadvantages of truss bridge, truss bridge requires perfect construction to work. They must distribute weight evenly. Other truss bridge designed for light traffic can have a lower weight tolerance, requires a lot of space. Interconnecting triangular components need to be large to bear the distribute heavy loads. There are weight requirements in relation to span length to achieve achieve required strength required architectural and engineering special specialists less use the general laborers and steel workers now that we know the seven type of bridges there are a few things that we need to consider before building a bridge although the general physics of bridge building have been established for quite some time, every build a bridge project presents complicated factors that must be taken into consideration while building the bridge. Some of these factors involve geology of the surrounding, the amount of traffic expected, weather, construction materials, and etc. Sometimes these factors are miscalculated or something occurs that the engineers and the bridge construction company didn't expect, thus resulting into the bridge collapsing. So to avoid the bridge from collapsing, building a strong and sturdy bridge has become one of the top priorities when it comes to building infra infrastructure. Hence, engineers who design these bridges must completely understand what is expected from the bridge including the complexities of the sites and other needs. To design and build a bridge that is not only safe but long-lasting as well, engineers need to consider some things. So number one, the width. The width of a bridge is dependent on the type of traveler and amount of traffic. The bridge will receive one higher traveler trials and wider is to need is needed to support more people at the same time. So while the bridges might be a little as four to five feet width, width 
other bridges can spa, a span more than 12 feet wide. So number two is site condition. So design of a bridge depend on what condition of a site where the, where it being built. So if a site included water crossing, exception or stripper evolution. Uh, additional condition should be uh, uh, should be made during design process. The third factor to consider before building a bridge is geotic analysis. Geotic analysis can be used for learning details about the site. For example, the analysis helps determine if different foundations are necessary. Knowing the surrounding soil condition helps in designing the footing required to keep the bridge structurally sound. The fourth factor to be considered before building a bridge is safety. A bridge must meet safety guidelines. Boards with protruding screws, nails, fasteners, or splinters provide a treat to anyone who might use the bridge. The bridge should also be able to stand up to bikes, roller blades, and heavy foot traffic. The last factor to consider before building a bridge is the durability. Durability is crucial when building a bridge for traffic. A bridge should be able to withstand the harsh environment it's built in. This might mean adding fortification for flooding or using stronger materials to ensure longevity. So, that is the factors to consider before building a bridge. And now, we are ready for the next step, which is how to build a strong and established bridge. So, in order to build a strong and long-lasting bridge, there are steps that need to be taken. Step 1 is the site inspection and planning. Before construction begins, planners must test the site for soil strength, depth, land layout, and other elements. Using computer-aided design, engineers can picture the bridge's behavior under different weights and weather conditions and determine the correct structure. Step 2, setting the foundation. After planning is complete, workers break ground on the job site and begin to install and begin installing the bridge's foundation. To do this, builders choose a stable location or drive supporting piles into the ground and install solid pillars that will later support the rest of the rest of the bridge. These pillars are typically made out of concrete and can support an immense amount of weight. continuation, step 3 in building a bridge is installing piers and bridge supports. So once the bottoms of the bridge piers are in place, crews build upward until each pier has reached its predetermined height. So depending on the size and type of bridge, supports can consist entirely of concrete or use a combination of steel or other materials.
Then the step 4 is adding the superstructure. So the superstructure includes all components that directly receive the load. So including the cables, support beams, and lattice work. So to install the superstructure, engineers must harness various materials and assemble structure that maintain supports when exposed to wind, gravity, and natural forces. So, the final step, which is the final quality and safety inspections. So, once construction is complete, crews perform safety tests using cranes and bridge booms to ensure that the structure meets all quality standards. So, these tests allow engineers to rule out or address any structural flaws and move forward when installing final paving and electrical systems. So, those are the steps in building a bridge. Again, step 1 is site inspection and planning. Step 2 is setting the foundation. Step 3 is installing the pre and bridge supports. Step 4 is adding the superstructure. And the final step, which is the final quality and safety inspections. So, that is how an engineer builds a strong and long-lasting bridge. They first need to know what type of bridge they will make. They need to consider some factors before building a bridge and follow the correct steps in making a bridge. So that is all. Thank you for watching. I am Mary Jamila Luna from BSCE 1C. My name is Aylin G. Romero from BSCE 1C. I am Trisha Ruaya from BSCE 1C. My name is Anna May Langris Padayo from BSU1C. Don't forget to marry you from BSU1C. My name is Jerome Fernandez from BSU1C.